to come up. Oh, webinar's been recorded. <laughs> uh, it's great to kind of be here with you and because we've all been trying to find creative ways to keep this industry going and keep getting at you guys virtually or in person and stuff like that. And I'm so excited that we've got ski shows happening. I know that London one's being postponed, but I think Birmingham is still going ahead. So I hope to see some of you guys there. Um, and I'm hoping that this season's actually going to kick off for us because I think we've all been locked in for a little bit too long. And I love, as much as I love this sunshine and love being out in this beautiful weather, I would take the snow any day and I cannot wait for this winter to get cracking. So I bet you guys are the same. Which is why we're here tonight, which is to kind of give you guys a bit of a lowdown on maybe how to wax your skis or snowboard and kind of offer you something back, give a little back to you guys. Um, I know I want to say a big thank you to Rebel Square, who's provided an awesome discount code for any of you that want to buy the, uh, the butter service kit, which comes with everything you need to service your board or skis. So a big shout out to Rebel Square. And then also just a massive thank you to the Ski Club of Great Britain for putting this event on. Um, so I basically, I, do, I guess I should just start a little bit about who we are and what we do. Um, we are Butter Wax. We started back in 2011 and a big hi to everyone that already knows us and hey to anyone that doesn't. Um, my background goes back to the mountains and I was a ski tech in Val d'Isère and I spent many a, a day and night waxing skis and boards for all the guys that are coming out on holiday and spent my time in a room not much bigger than this kind of little outdoor space we have here. And one thing that really struck me was the effects that wax was having, not only just to the mountains, but to my body physically. And I was experiencing exhaustion and fatigue and, and real kind of dizziness and, and sickness sometimes from using such high flow of waxes. And butter began from that want and need to create a more greener, eco-friendly wax. And that's the journey we set out on car 10 years ago, which is madness because it feels like it was yesterday to create something that was better for the environment, but also better environmentally for the body. And that's what we did. And ever since then, we've been taken on this journey by Butter and we followed it through its kind of, its times, whether that was through following competition series and going to different shows where we get to kind of meet people like yourself and teach you how to wax. Um, and teach you that it is something that you can do yourself. It's the best way that you can look after your own kit. We all spend hundreds and thousands of pounds on our kit, yet a lot of us don't take care of them. You know, you wouldn't do it to a car, you wouldn't go and buy a brand new car and not service it for 10 years. You would do it and you'd go in the garage. But we're here to show you that the basics of maintaining kit is something you can do yourself. And that adds to that environmental factor because the longer you make your kit last, the better it's going to serve you and the better for the environment that is. So what greater way than kind of offering you this kind of service to today. So we're going to be using, as I said, from the, uh, the Rebel Square League we've got with the discount code, this awesome uh, tin, which has everything you need in it, everything from uh, a really amazing, eco-friendly uh, water-based surfactant cleaner, which will give you a nice start for a degrease, a towel, a block of wax, a scraper and a brush. The only thing you need to add to this is the iron. We're here using a proper waxing iron, but that's because we service boards and skis all day, every day. You can get yourself down to Argos and get a value four pound iron, and it's not a problem to use somewhere like as long as you keep it down on that lowest heat. So not to melt the top sheet of the ski or board, but um, you can get these again, Rebel Square sell these um, if you need to get them. So let's jump straight in. So the first thing you need to do when maintaining your kit is you take your cleaner, which is the green stuff that comes in this little pack here, and you spray that all over the board. Which I'm gonna just use the terminology board a lot today, just because that's the, the, the piece we've got for the demo. I know a lot of you guys out there might be skiers, so please don't be offended. There is no rivalry between us, it really isn't. Um, and this cleaner is just gonna get rid of all that grease and dirt that you will pick up on the mountain. So many of us, when we get on that ski lift, we don't look down, but if you look down and when you get on, you'll find that those cables have dripped like black oil or grease, just where you're sliding across. And your board or ski will pick that up and it gets into the base of that board and will stop that wax penetrating in if it's stuck in there. So the best thing to do is give it a good degrease first. 
So Zach, my glamorous assistant, is doing that right now. Sometimes I refer to myself as uh, Paul Daniels, and he's he's my Debbie McGee when we do things like this. Call me Debbie. He is beautiful, just like Debbie. So what we've done there is we've cleaned it up. It's very similar to kind of how I use the terminology of like moisturizing your skin. You wouldn't do that before washing it first. So that's what we're doing. We're going to effectively clean and wash that ski or board. Once that's done, we're going to take our block of wax. For the demo tonight, we're using our graphite wax, which is one of our latest products. We uh, released this for the first time back in 2014 at Aaron Style where we were waxing some of the top riders in the world for a big competition. And I think for those of you who know Seb Toots, he was the first ever snowboard to use this wax on a big 50 foot kicker, which was quite scary for me to watch when I saw it go down, but it was amazing. So, so we're gonna take that block of wax and we're gonna hold it against our iron and we're gonna drip it all the way from one end to the other. It doesn't necessarily matter how you do this. Some people go tip to tail, some people go tail to tip. Some people go up and down, left and right. The important thing to remember is one block of wax will probably do you about 10 boards or 10 pairs of skis. And there's a little marker on the side of the wrapper that will sort of demonstrate how much you need to use. But we want to make sure that we're covering the whole thing. One error that I see people do is they don't go all the way to the tips on where the board of the ski kind of rises up because they think they don't use that part. But when you're flexing and going into big tight corners and curves, you are using that side of the base. And also, why not protect the whole thing? Again, if you don't do this, one of the common things that happens is any little nicks or stones that you hit, if you've got a brittle base, then it will just snag and cause big gouges. One of the common things that people ask us in this game is why why wax is so many people think it's for speed and that is the misconception speed is one of the benefits you get from waxing but the reason we're doing it is to prolong that life of the kit so we're going to now take that iron whether that's your argos four pound iron or your fancy waxing iron like ours and you're just going to melt that wax all the way down what you're doing here is heating up the wax that is containing all those oils and additives that we put in it and they're gonna penetrate down into your base and soak in really nice. The important thing here, keep that wax iron moving, never stop it. Keep it going, never stay at one point too much, keep it going. One of the really important tests here, I should be able to put my hand underneath wherever Zach is ironing and I cannot feel any heat. So just the trick is keep it going, keep it moving. Making sure that every bit of wax is heated up and every bit of wax has the opportunity to soak down into that base. Making sure we concentrate really heavily on the rails because one of the key areas that dries out on our equipment is where the, the metal rail that you're carving on, that generates heat, which makes that, that base dry out massively as it gets towards the middle. So this is the key area we want to make sure there's loads of wax. This would be a great opportunity to be like, any questions so far? But if you do have any questions, chuck them into the chat bar and then Daisy will shout them out at the end for them. Got to take the time with this, Tim. Can't rush it. There is no rush, that's it. If you want to have a timeline on it, what you should be thinking is this should probably take you a good 10 minutes. Keep it going. Make sure that wax gets right down in there. And once you've done it, let it settle a little bit and then go back and kind of heat it up again. And that gives another chance for all those additives. All that goodness is in that wax. One of the things that people think is that it's the wax that goes down into the base, whereas it's not. The wax is just a carrier product that we use for all that extra goodness that we put in it. So once that wax is set, you're basically just left with scrap on the top. And that's the bit we're going to take off in the next step. All the oils and the additives will soak down into the base, and that's what's going to keep your base nice and soft. One of the other amazing things that waxing our board or skis does, it gives us better edge-to-edge -edge control. If you've got a, a dry base and you're hitting from one rail to the other using that base, if you've got dry, snaggy bits, it's going to scratch. So what you'll find is not only will you get the benefit of speed, your kit will last longer, but your actual turning will become smoother and your control from edge to edge will get better. 
I get on that. Just, yeah. just to interrupt, we've got uh, one quick question on the chat. How hot should the iron be, i.e. setting on, on a normal iron? So if you're using a household iron, just have it right down its lowest setting. I think when we use waxing irons, we're down at about 60 degrees. And I think the lowest like a value iron, like a normal household iron is about 80. As long as it's down on its lowest setting and you keep it moving and you don't stop in one place for too long, you'll be fine. Remember that trick, put your hand underneath. If at any point you can feel heat, move somewhere else, move down the other end. All right, thanks baby. When was the last time you did some waxing, Zach? <laughs> well, what, was the last event? what was our last event? It's been waxing. so long. It's so great to be here doing this with you guys. Honestly, I've missed well, it so much. Bring on the winter. Is it waxing for this? I don't know. Well, it was ages ago. Too long is the answer to that question. Too long. Bring it all back. I hope you're all really excited to bring it back the snow and bring it back our opportunity to travel to and from France or Switzerland, wherever you're going to go on your holidays this year. Also, if you're outside, obviously the wax can get a bit hotter or the iron. If you're inside, remember, it does, it does make a bit of a difference. Yeah. All good. And we're good when you are, Jimbo. So what we want to do now is really let that wax set. We want to give the opportunity to cool right down. Let everything, like I said, that's inside that wax as a carrier soak down in. Ideally, I always suggest leaving this overnight. As a minimum, give it an hour. Let that wax super cool down. Um, yeah, so especially if you're in the mountains, before you hit Apres Ski, get back to the chalet, put the wax on, chuck them in the boot room, go off for your beers, come back in the, in, by the morning, and before you hit the slopes, scrape it off, off you go, so it's perfect. Um, so, what's that show where they say, here's one we prepared earlier? <laughs> Quite a few. And so the line I always used to use. Like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> so obviously we don't have the chance to sit with you guys and chat through to the morning, as much as nice it would be, but you guys obviously can't talk to us, so you'll just be listening to our voices. <laughs> right? so, uh, so here's one we prepared earlier, which is obviously pre-waxed. So this has had the opportunity to set, it's nice and cool, and all those additives have soaked down into the base. So what we're going to do now, our next piece from this little tin this kit is our scraper, which is this lovely bit of plastic. And we're just now going to scrape off that scrap wax. So like I said to you, this is now dead wax. It's all going to come off. I used to have people in the mountains that collected the wax off the workshop floor. And I'd be like, what are you doing with that? They're like, we're going to wax off all sorts of skis. It's like, don't be silly. This is all the goodness is now in that base. This is nothing but just just standard wax now. So all we're going to do is get it all off. You want to use this scraper to get the best of it off. One of the good tricks is to use your thumbs like this to put pressure in the middle and you're just going to scrape. We're going to go from one end of the ski or board to the other, tip to tail, tail to tip. Doesn't matter which way you go, what's really important is that we just do it nice big long strokes. Zach's going to show you that now. And what you'll find is it will start curling up in big kind of streaks. And that's a good thing. That lets you know it's cooled down enough that everything's in there. If you find that maybe it's a bit sticky still, and this is the case with any wax brand, it's because maybe you haven't heated it up enough in that spot. So you might want to go back to the iron and let everything soak down. Scrap wax should just be like really easy and solid to soak up. I know he's using that big long stroke, using his thumbs to add that pressure. Some people like to scrape towards them, some go away. It really doesn't matter. It's just about getting that wax off there. If you leave any of that residue wax on this board or your skis, it will just cause stickiness in the snow. Right, I probably could have just waxed half this board earlier, but I thought I'd make, I'd make it work for you guys. It's so long, I'm quite enjoying myself. <laughs> get, those thumb, get those thumb muscles working yeah. again. Get the power. We um, hosted a event at Arcteryx, wasn't it, with you guys, and we made them 
wax a record amount of skis in, in the hour we were at Arcteryx and I think yeah. her arms were burning for that we hour. Had four, a four-hour event, I think, wasn't it, Daisy? And I think you guys told me that maybe it'd be like 20 pairs of skis. And I think we had about 80. My fingers, my, my fingers were in peace. We were promised champagne and cheese and the opportunity to watch the tour, but I don't think we stopped wax, <laughs> waxing skis until around midnight that night. Much, we, much more peaceful. We worked up with us to finish to send back to customers. So yeah, thank you. But, but what then what a great opportunity it was to kind of let you guys experience the product and again give you something back from, from us as a thank you for this industry. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually a very satisfying thing, this. If those of you that haven't done it before, there's something really special about looking after your own equipment. Now, when you can go up on that slope and notice the difference in your speed, your ability to control your turns, and know that that's something you did, then that's amazing. And then it will get, you know, this becomes second nature. If I ever go to the mountains, it's the first thing I do is I get there. And sometimes I do it every other day, like just to keep that consistency in my riding. This is something you can do just once every holiday, but so you will probably notice that the skis start to slow down and start to kind of lose your, your, your ability to turn there throughout the week. So it's such a great thing to do yourself. And listen, it's never a problem to bring it into a technician if you're not sure, because we really happily kind of do this for you. But what's great is to give you guys the opportunity to help your stuff last longer and really kind of make a difference. You know, you know skiing and snowboarding is not a cheap sport. I get that there's fashions and we all buy new jackets, well, not we all, but some people when you buy new jackets and things every year, there's, a, there's something about skis. Technology is not changing that fast. You know, a set of skis should last you years, not months. And I get that we might need a, a bit of a quiver, in our, you know, where we have our all mountain, our freestyle or our free skis. But generally, we should get them again. Good. You know, if you're a seasonaire, there's no reason a border ski should last you like two seasons if you're riding every day. We can put a ski or a snowball through a face grinder like 12 times before that face or the edge is getting too thin. So, and that is, you know, you only ever have to do that once every few months if you're riding every day. So, I would encourage you guys to please make your kit bath longer and, and you know, be doing that yourself. So, at that point, we are technically ready to go out on the slopes. We could take use our, if you scraped enough, um, that, that could be the final stage. If you're kind of eager, you've had your breakfast, you've had your first coffee and you just get your mates are waiting for you. You can go out at that point. But what we like to do is we take our brush, which comes in the kit. This is just a, a, a sort of plastic bristle brush. Um, there's different brushes that put in different structures. If you're a racer, some have little copper strands that kind of put in like almost like a tire tread into that base to give you like extra kind of well, less friction, sorry. But this, one of the main points of this is just to tidy up the job we've done, especially in workshops. If I just give you a ski back and it's got scraper marks in it, you're going to look at it and the presentation will be like, great. So what we're doing, we're going to polish that up, buff it up and get rid of any of that excess wax that we might just have missed with our, with our scraper. So that's just going to do this. Again, we're going to use big, long, like scrubbing strokes making that as presentable as we can. <coughs> if it's an ice cold day, this might take you a bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not the most enjoyable job with cold freezing fingers. Yeah. <laughs> We've done this mountainside many a time at big competitions and things like that. And as much as we enjoy it, it's a hard time. So we've got a couple of questions coming in here. I'll okay. do them while you're while you're doing that. So, um, so what can you hear me? I can. <laughs> what is the optimum time to wax skis and your or your board before your holiday? The optimum time really is after your holiday, on the final day, before you travel back, make sure you dry out your skis, 
if they're nice and dry, there's no moisture still in that face, you get the wax on. And then when they're in storage for the whole of the summer, or however long that is, they've got that wax on, not only protecting them, maybe stopping that edge from rusting and stopping them getting nook marked if you've left them in a garage or places like that. That would be the best thing to do. Finish your holiday, dry out the skis, put the wax on. Start of your next holiday, they're already waxed. You're just going to scrape off, give it a polish. So that answers um, answers one of the other questions that was also at the end of the season. Would you wax your skis and not scrape them under when the, storing between yeah. seasons? Well, yeah, 100%. One of the other amazing tricks to do, this is a really interesting note thing. One, so the, what happens is the moisture is kept within the base and it works its way out to the edge. And what we've got at the edge, we've got our metal rails. So that's where we sometimes get rust. Sometimes you'll, you'll be like, why won't it rust? One of the amazing things is do Vaseline. Just rub Vaseline all around that metal edge when you put it away and then have the wax on as well. And then that will just keep them pristine. And then we've got, uh, what type of wax would you recommend for indoor ski slopes with artificial snow? Amazing question, right? Because that artificial snow, it's full of refrigerants and things that keep it cold. If you ever try and make a snowball out of that, you're gonna fail. It just disintegrates. It's called like champagne snow, we call it, like off piece stuff. But it's full of like, like fluorocarbons that keep it cold. Fluorocarbons dry out your face. You'll notice if you ever see a skier that's been on, on indoor slopes, it's like the base is just white. It's amazing how much it strips all those additives out that face. So the key thing with that is that, like if I ever hit Milton Keynes or Tamworth or Hemel Hempstead, I'll wax every time I go, literally every time, like every session, even if I'm just going for an hour. This is something that's going to take you like, you know, an hour out of your time and you're going to have a better, you're going to, again, your kit last longer. The other thing as well there is you'll notice when I was talking about that drifting of the oil and the grease off the, off the list, we get that a lot at the snow dimes, especially because that snow is not falling every day so we're picking up more of that grease so it's important even more so than in the mountains for waxing um if and I was, was the type of wax it would i mean just right. to be honest any any wax because you're going to do it every time you go so any wax will perform there um, kind of leads on nicely to this question. Is every type of wax suitable for every type of ski or should you use a different wax depending on the composition of your ski? Tricky one depending on your type of ski. A lot of waxes now are kind of all temp waxes and we use a lot of hydrocarbons to kind of make them adapt to their snow temperatures. And obviously there's different, the difference in snow temperature to air temperature. Some, some waxes will perform in some snow better than others with a different heat from the sun, depending on the type of ski you're on. So it's a very tricky one. Obviously what we want to do mainly is get a wax in. Then we want to be looking at the temperatures that are quite often listed on the wax and look at where you're going. If you're going to Canada in December and it's minus 30, you might want something in there with, with, with like a graphite powder or something. Is that the graphite that we use is tested down to minus 35 and it will resist for a good five to six days. Whereas maybe like the butter original would be great for two, three days, but then you're going to have to reapply. So it just depends on where you're going and what type of like riding are you doing? Are you hitting black slope? Is it icy? Are you stripping? Are you heating up those rails sort of with aggressive skiing? Therefore, you again, you want something that's going to be harder wearing it goes down to cold temperatures. Amazing. And then one more, which you probably answered, but we'll just make sure we've ticked it off. Um, this person had their skis whacked, waxed after they last skied at the beginning of 2019. Should they wax them again before then their next ski trip? Yeah, you can't wax. You can't wax too much. Like, do it again. Why not? Like, it's good practice. It gets you in the room. Like, you'll know. Like, you can feel when when a ski comes out of a factory they give it a factory wax it goes over a big roller i've got one here it's just a big roller that we load up with wax and it goes over when i buy a new pair of skis i'll wax them six times from new and you'll notice them like wax soak in scrape them wax again will soak in wax them again so it's like six seven times and like load up that base and it will make it like 
less, so it makes it more supple and rides so much better. Um, so the, the answer to that is you cannot wax too much. Like the bet, the more the better. But yeah, so. I just want to go back to the other question. I've noticed I didn't answer the point about the different types of bass. Obviously, we've got center bases and different things like that. You'll notice on some of the more kind of high end skis with the higher grade PTEX in the bottom that sometimes the wax doesn't penetrate as easy and it's because the pores are tight and tightly knitted together. So we might just need to raise our temperature on our own a little bit and just spend longer just penetrating those oils down into the base. So just keep waxing. Whereas a, whereas a cheap, cheaper, sorry, not cheap pair of skis, but no skis are cheap. You know, you'll notice if it's like a rolled out bit of P-Tex, you know, the wax is soaking in seconds. It's like the easiest job to do. So sometimes if you've got an expensive pair of skis to take longer doing this. That's the, that's the key thing. And one more, does metal brushing ruin sintered bases? Not at all, absolutely not at all. We're talking about hard plastic based. PTEX is, is a solid material. It won't ruin it. What we have to remember though, is the structure we put into that plastic. If I refer back to what I said earlier, where you can, you can grind a base 10 times, every time we're taking off a fraction of a mil and we're going to end up running out of rail more importantly so the more you scrape in and use structure it will it's not going to damage it in any way but it will shorten the life perfect that's all the questions so far if there's any more stages to to the board there okay so zach's wonderfully brushed that and I love this point because I can kind of look down it. I've got a nice sheen on there and it looks beautiful. It looks really well. Right. One of the things you know when a board or a ski hasn't been waxed, another trick, if you look up when people are on a chairlift, you'll notice that some people have snow just stuck to the bottoms of their skis. And that's because that and that's the friction they're having to ride against when they're coming down. And you can look up and go, that's been waxed. That hasn't been waxed. That's been waxed. And one of the amazing tests, Zach, just put that back there on the table. Yeah, just to pull that back. Can't see anything. One of, oh, I'm right. That's all I'm left. Put on this side. Yeah. I love this little trick. This is how we show it. I'll just put it for right. Yeah. What we've basically done is made this base water repellent. So that's what I was saying about the snow on the bottom. Wait a second for that one. I love this. I wish you guys were here to watch this because this is the current truth here. When I pour water onto this base, you'll notice it being with the beads. It will just sit on top. Push the camera over a bit. So you'll see that perfect little bead of water just sits there. Is that the line? Kind of moving, you can't see that. But it's like this perfect little puddle. And when I lift it up, it just rolls straight off and disappears. And you're left with a perfectly kind of Un, unwet board and it just goes to show that how water repellent we've now made that and that's going to help you glide perfectly across the snow and beautifully from that edge to edge to so round of applause take a bow thank you very much that's 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 us that's what we do that's our little gift to you and, and listen if you've got any questions if you need any advice, my phone number and my email address is on our website. I would love to talk to you. I can talk skis and boards all day, every day. It's like an addiction to me. And it, the more I can kind of give you advice, the more you can give your friends advice, the more we can protect our mountains and make, you know, make all our enjoy, like holidays and everything last longer. I'm not going to go into the whole climate crisis that we're in, but every tiny little thing that we can do, whether it's using the greener wax or making our kit last longer, it's just gonna help the world and help my little three-year-old daughter, my three-year-old daughter's life in the mountains last forever. So yeah, any questions are welcome and thank you so much. We have a few questions coming in, in about mm -hmm. edge servicing um, yes. and what to do about that and whether we want to host an, another session on, on edges. <laughs> Love to, absolutely. Um, obviously, we are a wax company, but we are a whole crew of technicians and we have serviced skis and boards, whether that's base grind structures, edges, and waxing. We, we know it all. Pete, I don't know it all. It sounds awful. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, ed, doing your edges, again, it is something you can do at home if you're keeping on top of your edges. If you've got an already sharp edge, you can keep it sharp. If your edge has gone rusty, 
through that moisture attacking it, unfortunately, you are going to have to see a workshop because we have to put it through our machines and, and basically take off a whole almost like half a mil to get through that rust, depending on how long it's been on there for. So rail maintenance, 100%. I'd love to teach you guys. I'd love to show you guys how to do it. If any of you out there haven't, you know, you've got skis in the garage, they've been used for a few years and they're rusty, get them in the workshop, get that edge grid, and then we'll show you how to keep on top of it. Amazing. And then again, nicely following on from that, should you wax your skis before or after preparing your edges? I don't know if there's a right or wrong answer to that. I would sort of, I would say do them after because you're less likely going to snag your fingers when you're doing the scraping and the brushing. Oh, I it, yeah. I'm the same as you, yeah. <laughs> I think that's like who puts, who puts jam on top of cream and cream on top of jam on the scone. There is no right answer. It's just important that we're all doing it. It's probably safer, safer, safer to do the edges after. <laughs> it's safer to do it afterwards. The edges, um, that is. One argument would be to do it before because you could do your edges and then make sure you've cleaned it and got any little snags off before we're kind of putting a wax in. But I, I honestly don't think there's a right or wrong answer for that. It's whatever you feel comfortable doing. Amazing. We have one more question and I'm struggling to decipher it because I think it's got a bit of a typo in it. Um, <laughs> if they, it, it's Peter's question, so if he'd like to ask, ask it again, um, can we get, I can, can we read get it. Audio? It says how <laughs> how to ill a scrape in the base with filling a scratch in the base. How do you fill a scratch in the base with wax? Okay, amazing. Well, well, the answer to that is you don't fill a scratch in the base with wax. You'll see. Um, this, this is a friend's old board. And all these black lines here are gouges. Look at that one, that is awful. I like to call these battle scars. And that's why sometimes we like to keep them in kind of black P-Tex rather than clear or color matching because it kind of tells a little story about your holidays. And sometimes you go, like, oh, remember that rock? Oh man, that was awful. Remember that kind of rail I hit or something like that. So what we do is we use a P-Tex, which is what the base is made of originally. And it comes in little stick forms that you can buy again, Rebel Square or any good kind of ski shop. And we can like heat it. What we need to do is just make our gouge or cut stone chip, whatever, nice and clean, no fragments in there. Dig it out, use a bit of that cleaner, let it dry out. And then we use a lighter and we just basically set fire to the P Tex and it comes off with this perfectly lovely little beading drop and you can dribble it all the way down. And then we use a metal scraper just to flatten it and make it smooth. And sometimes you'll have to do that a good few times. In workshop scenarios, sometimes the scratches are too big and that P-Tex just won't hold in. And then we have to cut the patch out and then we use like an epoxy resin to hold the patch in. It gives you a new bit of base. Um, other times we can use a P-Tex gun which kind of really kind of penetrates that. If the, if the cut is down to the core in the wood, we'll use a gun because we can get a proper good solid flat fixing that will go and bow into that wood. Again, I'd love to, we could do a whole nother demo on, on P-Texing if you want. Uh, we'd be keen for that and I'm sure they would, so we can definitely get that in the diary. Let's do um, it. That looks Let's like it's it. all it. the questions. We now, do we? <laughs> Definitely. Yes, we could all we could also try and one day do a live event, which yeah. hopefully is in the not not too near future. Yeah. Um, that looks like it's all the questions. Um, if anyone has any more, please uh, do pop them up. Or as Jim said, um, his contact details are on the Butter website. Um, if anyone would like to get the information about the Rebel Square discount, if they missed the email that went out before the talk, um, do email into the ski club. Uh, members at skiclub.co.uk and we can get that distributed out so you can get your kit ordered. Um, thanks so much, Jim and, and Zach. Um, that was really, really useful. I'm sure everyone thoroughly enjoyed that. Um, we do have more virtual talks coming up, kind of follow on nicely from this. They'll be hosted with Snow and Rock, um, all about the kit and equipment coming up for next year. Um, so do keep an eye out for those. Those will be launching very soon. Um, we do have, uh, I was about to say we have one more question that's coming, but it just says thank you very much. There's lots of thank yous coming in. Um, we'll be popping this recording online on the Ski Club YouTube channel tomorrow. 
So if you want to share it with any of your friends or watch it again as you follow along, um, please do. We'll share that out by email um, as soon as it's up and available. Um, thanks everyone for joining and thanks again, Jim and Zach. Thank you all, thanks, honestly. I thank you for everybody that joined. I honestly mean it. My number's on there. Give me a call, even if it's just to ask a simple, simple question. And listen, we've all had a tough year, so I love. I want to wish you all big love. Stay safe, as we always say. Get to the mountains. Let's get this industry back up and rocking. Everyone get to ski shows. Everyone, let's get out there and support the little brands again. And then, yeah, take it easy. Thanks, guys. Amazing. Thanks, guys. See you later.